Their stories are similar to mine. Addiction, abuse, depression. Imagine where your life would be tomorrow without work or home or school to go to. Imagine your worst day on a park bench with no money, family, or friends. But he said to me, he said, there's more to you than you can see. And for the first time in my life, someone other than my mom, and let's face it, you can't always trust your mother. <laughs> yeah? Someone other than my mom spoke to my possibility. You'll, you may never know the impact your mentorship has on another person. I'm here today because I had a mother that wouldn't give up on me. I'm here today because I live in a country that has an infrastructure to support those that are poor and marginalized and dealing with mental health issues. I was that guy that struggled with, with addiction and, and poverty and homelessness. I have a nine millimeter in my hand, it's sitting on the edge of my bed. I'm trying to find the courage to take my life. My mom walks into the room, horrified by what she sees, runs out and calls 911. But the poor decisions continued to plague my life. And I went from smoking pot and using alcohol uh, to finding myself in the severe grip of heroin addiction. The lowest point of my life, I found myself pushing a shopping cart around Vancouver's downtown east side, collecting cans and bottles to support a drug dependency. I continued to struggle with mental health and with addiction. And I couldn't seem to get a grip on it. I couldn't seem to find the opening. I knew that there was more inside me, but I, I couldn't find it on my own. The night I was finally at the end of my rope, I met a compassionate and empathic police officer named Constable Scott McLeod from the OPP. And I believe in many ways that Scott was far ahead of the mental health bell curve that we see policing embracing today. In less than 12 years, I went from a kid pushing a shopping cart in the downtown east side to finding myself on the cover of McLean's magazine as a celebrated Canadian entrepreneur. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> The thing that keeps me awake at night is how many kids across this great country of ours have all the opportunity that I have, but they don't have my mom. And they haven't met Scott, and they have no one in their corner. They have no one to champion them to say, I believe in you, kid. You have it in you to succeed. See, I, I believe that inside each and every one of us is an unlimited, untapped potential. And so I urge you, graduates to find the thing that you're passionate about. Find the thing that fires you up. Find the thing that wakes you up in the morning, that gets your little feet moving towards that thing that you feel is worthwhile, towards your push for change. Because when you begin to access and, and move forward in relentless action, that's when the world begins to unfold in extraordinary ways. I believe that we are at a time in history when in the not too distant future they will call this before as each one of us wakes up to what's possible, that infinite possibility inside every single one of us and picks up our opus and march forward with courageous action. We can and we will change the world. But not a moment before we change ourselves. And the reason I believe that is the first time I had that idea. I was sitting on a park bench in downtown East Vancouver, a broken, homeless drug addict. In closing, graduates, I will say to you what Ron Bonnesteel said to me at my graduation, life owes you nothing. And for some of you, it's gonna give you less it's gonna tug your hair, it's gonna scratch your face, and it's gonna knock you down. And from someone who's been knocked down, I can tell you the only instruction I can give you when you get knocked down is to get back up and keep walking. Thanks.
a lot of bells in my life I can't unring. And I have to deal with that. And I have to forgive myself. And my way of making amends is by not repeating it. And by staying sober a day at a time and doing my best to put back into a world that's given me so much. My story of transformation began with the Ontario Provincial Police. And, you know, that really helped open a big door for me. Um, led, led me back to school, uh, eventually success in, uh, in the corporate world. And I got to a, le a level, a place, uh, I suppose, where I began asking the question about legacy. What could I do to give back to a country that's given me so much? He said, why don't you walk across Canada for youth homelessness? At which point I replied, why don't you walk across Canada? <laughs> kind of busy this week. <laughs> but then he said something brilliant. He said, Joe, you're trying to push for change. You're trying to open awareness. You're trying to break down barriers. You're trying to destigmatize the issue. You're trying to educate. You're trying to push for change. He said, why don't you take that symbol of homelessness, a shopping cart, and push that across Canada? So beginning on the 1st of May in St. John's, Newfoundland, uh, myself and Team Push for Change are, are going to commence a 9,000 kilometer walk across what I believe to be the greatest country in the world. Um, we're going to trek through 10 provinces, we're going to visit the three northern territories and we have an extraordinary opportunity to engage community. We can move the needle together. We can change and create a different kind of society to support every single young person. When he was talking about like ending his life because of his addictions and he got the help that he needed and he turned his whole life around which was like really good. That's what the message was for me today. You count. Stand up, you count.